Hey, badass business owners, welcome back to the show. Today, I want to talk about seasonal businesses. Now, when we think seasonal businesses, there's all different types that are out there. One of the ones that come to mind for a lot of people is they think, oh, Christmas stuff, things that people do really well at Christmas, that's a seasonal business. Well, that's one type of seasonal business. Believe it or not, a lot of service-based businesses can also be uh, seasonal. So for example, if you have a landscaping business, there are some parts that it's year round. And then there's other parts because of snow and everything, their seasonal business is during this whole six month to eight month window. And then there's other people that might have a seasonal business as short as two months or four months. Uh, and sometimes it's because they can only use their stuff during certain times. Uh, so they got to get in and get out. Now the key is to any seasonal business is how do you maximize the amount of sales and more importantly, maximize the amount of profit that you can make during this short window that you have. So what I wanted to talk about today was just a few different things to keep in mind when you have a seasonal business. Now, the first one and the most important is you have carrying costs throughout the entire year. Now you have your product costs and the things that it takes you to do your actual business during the time that you're doing it. But for many people, you also have expenses that are year round. So you may have rent that you have to pay. You may have equipment. You may have leases. You may have insurance. You may have people that you have to still keep aboard. Uh, during that time frame, so you do have costs that go year round. So one is you. It's really important that you understand the numbers for the months that you are not doing your service or product as strongly as others. So sometimes it might come to a complete shutdown. You need to know the carrying costs during that time frame. And for some of you, it just slows down dramatically, and you need to know that. For example, when I had the ice cream shop, I knew that in. November, December, and January, they were going to be the three slowest months. So I had to have enough uh, money in the bank to be able to cover the net loss that I ended up having during those months if I did not have enough sales. So the same thing with your business. You need to understand what that number is so that way you can set it off. Because what happens is when we have our good months, a lot of times people go on a spending spree and they think, oh my God, I got all this money and they take it. And the reality is they need, a, need to set aside $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, $50,000, whatever the case may be, to cover those slower months. So when you have a seasonal business, it's really important that you, you yes, you need to maximize those times when you're really busy, but you also need to set aside the money to be able to get you through the slower months. Now, when you're thinking of the slower months, the first thing you need to do is ask yourself, what can I do during those slow times to be able to minimize those costs? So can can you uh, repurpose the equipment? Can you reuse? For example, there's a lot of landscapers that go to snow equipment uh, and they're able to switch over to that so they can convert some things into taking over the snow stuff. There's some people that jump into Christmas lights uh, in order to help offset that, for example, because they can't do as much work. So you need to ask yourself when it comes to your particular business, can you use uh, either your your products, can you use your services, can you use your equipment, can you use your land, can you use your building, can you use it for something else that is happening during that time frame? Can you rent it out? So for example, let's just say you have a building and you have some land. Is there another business that you might be able to, whose, whose season is opposite of yours, that they would be willing to use your property, for example, um, or your equipment to be able to do their business? Can you work out something? So this way it helps minimize your costs, but finds another revenue stream that you can do on top of that. So that's one of the things that you want to look at doing. Now, the other thing is, is let's just say that's not an option and you only work, let's just say six months out of the year, your question has to become, how do I maximize those six months? How can I get as much as I profit as I can? Now, here's the thing. A lot of times what we think is we need to put more sales on top of things. And the reality is you don't always necessarily need more sales. What you need to focus on is how do you get more profit? Because there comes a tipping point where there's only so many people that you can service during a certain time frame, without adding more teams or more trucks or more equipment or what more whatever. So first stop and say, okay, I need to go through and I need to make sure that I'm looking at my profit and loss and I am diving into my expenses and my costs and I'm getting them to be the best that I can possibly get them to be because that's going to give you more profit, right? Because ultimately that's what we do this for is we do it for the profit. We don't do it necessarily for the sales. So I'd rather have a business that does $100,000 in sales but makes me at $50,000 versus having a million dollar business that I make the same $50,000. 
see how that doesn't make sense? So, but there's people that do that all the time. There's people that do a quarter of a million dollars, half a million dollars, and they make $20,000 at the end of the day. You're, it's not about driving sales as much as it is driving profits. Okay. So if you're going to drive sales, you definitely want to do that, but you want to make sure that you've got profits going along with it. So the thing you want to focus on in a seasonal business is not only how to get the most sales that you can get out of it, but how can you get the most profit out of it? So ask yourself, can you do, you know, are you lean and mean when it comes to expenses and costs? Are you getting the best product costs that you can get? Are you making sure that you, is there any add-ons that you can add to that service, that product or whatever it is that you offer? Can you, because most add-on things are most uh, warranties or extra services, things that you can give them um, is something else that you can make some more money on because people are willing to pay for more convenience or more benefits or more, you know, bells and whistles, whatever the case may be. Can you add something to it that is going to increase the profit? But now what happens is it increases your sales, but more importantly, it increases your profit and you're not having to get more people, if that makes sense. Okay, because it's not about getting more people to use it. It's about how do you get more money out of each individual user, in which case we're trying to drive our uh, average ticket, if you will, with those people. How can we get them to spend more with us? Uh, So you want to look at that now, another thing that, that's going to sound a little bit weird, but the other thing you need to do is when you have a limited a, a time, one of the things you don't have time for is dilly dollars, people that are going to be wasting your time and energy and your resources. So if you have somebody that is a customer to you during that short time frame, but they're taking way too much of your time, way too much of your energy and everything else, you're better off letting them go to someone else and getting them getting out. You have to think of your time as your inventory, okay? Inventory, as we've discussed in the past, is anytime you have inventory sitting on a shelf, it's like having money sitting on the shelf. It does inventory does you no good unless you sell it. Otherwise, it's just profits just sitting there that you can't tap into. So when you're looking at your seasonal business, do you have products? Do you have people? Do you have anything that is sucking up that profit because you need to turn them, you need to move them out. Because if you make your money by turning people and by turning inventory, then you need to ask yourself, how do I turn my customers? How do I turn my inventory? How do I move through more people, more product in order to make the most money? Because once again, you're trying to maximize that short window that you have, and you don't have time for people that are going to suck out the um, energy um, and, the, and that product. Let let someone else deal with that. If you have a problem customer and you keep dealing with the same problem customer, you need to get rid of them. You need to cut bait. You need to let them go. If you have people that have say, hey, I'm just going to park here and I'm just going to use this space and your resources or whatever the case may be, you need to let them go. You need, you know, it's kind of like when you go into, here's a good ex- analogy. You ever go into like a restaurant or to a fast food place? and people are just sitting there and they're sitting there and they're talking and all they've bought is a coffee or a soda or whatever the case may be. As a business owner, you just want their butts out of those seats because you've got other customers waiting to sit. Think about when you've gone into a restaurant and and you're you're sitting in the lobby and you're waiting forever to be able to be seated. And meanwhile, you're looking at all these people just sitting there yip yip bapping and all you want to do is scream like, get up so I can go sit down. Well, guess what? The business owner needs to have that same mentality. They need you. They need those people out of the seats so they can put more people in the seats that are paying that want to spend some money. So I need you to think of your business in the same way. You need to turn those seats. You need to turn and get those people in and out so you can get more people in and out. You have a short window of time. You know, for example, in that restaurant, they only have that dinner hour. It might be a couple hours and they've got to turn as many people as they can during that time frame to maximize the amount of money that they can make during that time frame. So when you're thinking about your seasonal business, I want you looking at all these different parts. I need you to be sitting there thinking, okay, this is the money I need to make to cover my my slow months. I need to look at maximizing my current months. I need to look at how do I add more profitability to that bottom line? Uh, How do I turn my customers? How do I get more people in and more people out uh, of that business? You know, you need to be thinking of all those different things. There's all these different pieces that are going to help you with that seasonal business. And I think if you focus on those pieces of that business in the beginning, it's going to, you're going to, you're going to see your profits go up just because you're focused on that. Are there other things that you could possibly do? Yes. But honestly, the biggest things that you can do in the very beginning before you go to that next stage is you got to take each step at a time. So the very first few steps have to do with 
setting that money aside, making sure that you you lower those costs as much as possible during those slow months, but really try to lower those costs year round, but definitely during those slower months. The next thing you need to do is ask yourself, can I utilize my space, my equipment, everything during those slower months to get some kind of income coming in? Can I rent it out? Can I share it with people? Can I partner with another business? Stuff like that. How can you make money during those slower months? And then the third component of that is when it's really super busy, what can I do to be able to create even more sales and get those butts turning and get those customers turning faster? So this way, by getting the most profit out of them as I can, how can I turn them to make more room for more people? Because I have a finite amount of time in order to make as much money as I possibly can. Hopefully that makes sense. And if you ever have any questions whatsoever, don't forget that you can just reach out and ask. I love to hear from people. You can email me at Tammy at local small business coach.com anytime. I love to hear from everybody. All right, with that, I'm going to get out of here and uh, let's go make some money. So get out there and be the badass that I know you are. Hey, badass business owner, before you go, as you know, I'm a huge believer in you knowing your business numbers. After all, it isn't about how much you sell. It's about what you keep. And the best way to grow your profits is to start diving in and understanding those business numbers. To help you on this journey, I have created the Know Your Business Numbers course. We will walk through how to read your profit and loss statement. You'll learn the key calculations that'll help ensure that you're making a healthy profit on all of your products or services, plus a ton of other good stuff that'll help you learn how to use those business numbers to create even more sales and profits. Just check out the link below in the show notes or visit knowyourbusinessnumberscourse.com. So if you're ready to increase those profits, it's time you start diving into your business numbers.